you. So, uh, so I, I want to just uh, um, describe what's yeah. what's in this folder that I gave to each of the members of the of the commission mm -hmm. panel. Uh, the first is uh, the statistics, the annual report showing the enormous number of complaints that are uh, rejected for failing to state a complaint or dismissed uh, right at the outset. Okay, statistics that run from 74% to 63% of complaints filed. Okay, the next, the next page, oops, the next page is the um, is the state controller's uh, report from 1989 on the Commission on Judicial Conduct, where he recognized that you can't make any assessments about statistics and about how complaints are being processed by an agency unless you can actually review the complaints and the dismissal letters. You have to put them side by side and examine them and any notes with respect to the, to the investigation that has been undertaken, if any. Okay. The third document that I had is the budgets uh, for the past one, two, three, four, five years, which shows that um, the uh, the figure in 2011 was 15 and a half million dollars for to fund attorney discipline. Today, it's 14 million eight hundred thousand. So. You see the difference from 2011, and in fact, it's just now slowly cl climbing back up to where it had been in 2011. Meanwhile, uh, the judges have secured fraudulently pay raises that have, over the past uh, number of years, uh, cost taxpayers $150 million, and now each year another $50 million. But these are, these are the budget figures that I had provided in the folder, okay, which uh, 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 Chairman uh, Kozier doesn't want to take with him to examine. And then um, I had additionally, oh, here it is. What is the purpose of the Court of Appeals? The Court of Appeals in a brochure that it, it has right in its clerk's office says, the court was established to articulate statewide principles of law in the context of deciding particular lawsuits. In other words, all the divergence, all the discrepancy uh, uh, between the departments, uh, well, what has the Court of Appeals done? Well, the answer is that the Court of Appeals has not exercised the jurisdiction it has to settle the law, to identify what are the appropriate uh, considerations, factors, uh, where the uh, accused attorney's discovery rights come in, where the public's rights come in. Uh, the, the Court of Appeals has completely abdicated. Uh, and then, of course, uh, finally, uh, I uh, provided the um, question presented to the U.S. Supreme Court uh, with respect to my, the suspension of my mother's law license, which details the unconstitutionality of New York's attorney disciplinary law. All of these uh, uh, points were made uh, by my mother uh, to the New York Court of Appeals repeatedly. She sought what review. Year? She sought review six times she went up to the Court of Appeals, and the Court of Appeals uh, would not take review. Well, that's what's happening again and again with uh, attorneys. That's why uh, Pro Professor Giller's uh, law review article was, was so limited, because not only did it never go beyond the face of appellate division decisions, but it made no reference to the role of the Court of Appeals. And obviously what uh, uh, Professor Gillers was setting forth were divergences that represented uh, invidious selectivity. Um, they, they are clearly unconstitutional. Well, these attorneys obviously have gone up to the Court of Appeals seeking review. Likewise, they've gone up to the Court of Appeals seeking review on issues of discovery, uh, which is a, a topic that the State Bar dealt with, but without any reference to uh, how the Appellate Division and uh, Court of Appeals have dealt with the, the issue. Because when you look at the case file, you see that the, the courts have refused to confront fundamental constitutional due process issues. Thank you. Great.